Category O, Lecture 5, BGG Reciprocity. Let us start with a setup. We work with a semi-simple finite dimensional complex Lie algebra G with a fixed triangular decomposition. G is equal to n minus plus h plus n plus. Here h is a fixed Cartan subalgebra. N plus is the nilpotent subalgebra corresponding to the choice of positive roots, and N minus is the corresponding negative subalgebra, which is a direct sum of root subspaces for negative roots. We denote by W the while group of G. The associated category O is a full subcategory of the category of finitely generated G modules, which consists of all G modules that are h-diagonalizable and on which the universe enveloping algebra of n plus acts locally finitely. We know that simples in O are exactly the simple highest weight modules L lambda, where lambda is an element from the dual space to the Cartan. We also know that category O has a decomposition into a direct sum of full subcategories O chi, where chi runs through the set of all possible algebra homomorphisms from the center of the universe enveloping algebra to complex numbers. So these homomorphisms are called central characters. And the block O chi is exactly the third subcategory in O, which is generated by simples L lambda, on which the center of the universe enveloping algebra acts via scalars prescribed by the character chi. And we know that simples in O chi are of the form LW dot lambda, where lambda is some fixed element in H star, W is an element of the while group, and dot is the dot action of W on H star. So we have the defining, the usual action of W on H star, and to get the dot action, we should shift the usual action with respect to the element rho. So we shift the origin from zero to minus rho. And here rho is one half of the sum of all positive roots. And we know that every object in O has finite length. So our first observation in this lecture is the following theorem from the original paper of BGG. The claim is that category O has enough projective objects. In other words, every object in O is a quotient of a projective object in O. Of course, it is enough to prove the claim for each central character block O chi separately, because we have a decomposition of O into a direct sum of such blocks. So we fix some, some central character chi, which is, we assume is the central character chi lambda of the simple highest weight module L lambda. So lambda is now a fixed element of the dual space of the Cartan. And we consider the set capital lambda consisting of all weights of the following form. So we take the union over all elements in the dot orbit of our small lambda with respect to the action, to the dot action of the while group. And for each such element nu, we take nu plus all possible linear combinations of negative roots with non-negative integer coefficients. So this set, nu plus this set of all possible linear combinations of negative roots, can be recognized as exactly the support of the Verma module delta with highest weight, nu. And since we know that all simple objects in O chi are exactly the simple quotients of such Verma modules, we obtain that for any object M in O chi, the support of M is a subset of lambda. So now we can choose a big enough positive integer N with the following property. So if we fix any 
set of non-negative integer coefficients k alpha indexed by positive roots, having the property that the sum of all these k alphas are greater than or equal to n, then we have that mu plus the sum of all positive roots alpha with coefficients k alpha. So this element should not be an element in lambda. So this is clearly possible because uh, so the set lambda is defined as a finite union of cons which go uh, into the direction of negative roots. So now if we fix mu and try to go in the direction of positive roots, so the positive con starting with mu intersects the negative con lambda, so the union of finitely many cons lambda, in a finite number of weights. So therefore, the, there are only finitely many such vectors k alpha for which mu plus such a linear combination belongs to lambda. So we choose n, which is great enough so that all vectors whose sum greater than or equal to n satisfy the conditions that mu plus linear combination of positive roots with such coefficients is now outside lambda. Now we denote by x the left ideal of Eugene generated by the nth power of the positive part, so this is the n which we have chosen, and also generated by all elements of the form h minus mu of h, where h is an element of the Cartan subalgebra. So we denote by q lambda mu and n the corresponding quotient of the universal enveloping algebra by this left ideal. So this is just the left module over G. And it is very easy to see, by definition, this module belongs to O. This is because it's generated by a weight vector. The positive part acts locally finitely on the generator, and the mo module is generated by one element. So this module belongs to O. So we can take and denote by P lambda mu n the direct summand of this module q lambda mu n, which belongs to O chi. So this is the direct sum of all indecomposable summons of this module, which are objects in O chi. Okay, so what we claim, we claim that if we consider the functor home over G from our module q lambda mu n, into any module m in O chi, so the value of this functor at a module m is isomorphic to taking the mu's weight space of m. So this follows directly from the definition because the module q is generated by one element, one, the image of one from the universe enveloping algebra, and the conditions on this element are that it should be killed by the nth power of n plus, and it should be killed by all elements h minus mu of h, where h is an element in the Cartan. And of course, these are exactly the elements of m mu, which satisfy these two conditions. Therefore, this functor, home g, q lambda mu n blank, is an exact functor on O chi, because taking the weight space is obviously an exact functor. We work with H semi-simple modules. Uh, and of course, because of the definition, since uh, we have defined P lambda mu n as the maximal direct sum of Q lambda mu n, which belongs to O chi, this functor homing from Q is isomorphic to the functor homing from P on the block O chi. Consequence, the module P lambda mu n is projective in O chi. Note, of course, that the module P lambda mu n has a non-zero homomorphism to L mu because L mu mu is a one-dimensional weight space. So this proves that any simple module in O chi has projective cover because P lambda mu n is a projective module which subjects on L mu. L mu and mu was arbitrary highest weight which appears in O chi. And since every module in O chi has finite lengths, 
So the usual argument by induction that projective covers can be lifted to middles of uh, short exact sequences, we obtain that any module in OKI has a projective cover. In other words, OKI has enough projectives. So this allows us to describe blocks of category O using finite dimensional associative algebra. Again, a theorem from the original paper of BGG. Every block OKI is equivalent to the category of finite dimensional modules over a finite dimensional associative algebra. So let's collect the information which we know about OKI. We know that it is abelian, that it has finitely many simple objects, and that every object of this category has finite lengths. We know that all home spaces are finite dimensional and that every object has projective cover. So therefore, category OK has a projective generator, so there is a projective object P such that any projective object in OK belongs to the additive closure of P. And then the usual uh, abstract nonsense tells us that OK is equivalent to the category of finite dimensional modules over the algebra obtained as the opposite of the endomorphism algebra of the projective generator P. So this means that blocks of category O are described by finite dimensional algebras. Next, let us talk about modules with Verma flag. So we say that a module M in O has a Verma flag if there is a filtration whose subquotients are isomorphic to Verma modules. So we denote by f of delta the full subcategory of O consisting of all modules that have a Verma flag. And of course, directly from the definition, it follows that all Verma modules are objects in f delta. Please note that Verma modules are also called standard modules in category O, and therefore Verma flags are also called standard filtrations. So a module has a Verma flag if and only if it has a standard filtration. And directly from the definition, it follows that f of delta is closed under finite direct sums. As an example, if we consider the module Q lambda mu n, which was constructed a couple of slides ago, then it is very easy to see, using the poincare birgoff witt theorem, that this module has a Verma flag. So if we take the poincare birgoff witt theorem and take the basis in G, which starts on the left with elements from n minus, then elements of H and elements of n plus, then using the conditions which were used to define the module Q lambda mu n, we see that this module, Q lambda mu n, is free as a module over U n minus with a finite basis which is defined as the quotient of U of n minus plus h modulo these, the ideal generated by these conditions. So it's a free U n minus module of finite rank, and it is easy to see by induction that any such module has a Verma flag. So the main property of F delta, again from the original paper of BGG, is the property that F delta is closed under direct summons. So it is easy that it is closed under direct sums. The fact that it is closed under direct summons is a non-trivial and very important property. So to prove this, we do induction on the length of a Verma flag. So assume that we have a direct sum of two modules x and y, which belong to f of delta. And let lambda be a highest weight of q, so then it should be a highest weight of either x or y, we assume that it's a highest weight of x. And we fix a non-zero element v in x lambda. By the universal property of Verma modules, delta lambda maps to both Q and X by sending the canonical generator of delta lambda to V. So V is an element, is a weight element of highest weight, 
So delta lambda can be mapped to the module Q by mapping the generator to this vector V. It is easy to see that the quotient of Q by the image of delta lambda is isomorphic to the quotient of X by the image of delta lambda plus Y. So by induction, the quotient of Q by delta of lambda has a Verma flag. So by induction, we can assume that both X divided by delta of lambda and Y have Verma flags. We also know that X belongs to F delta because we have a short exact sequence. So delta of lambda is a submodule of X and X modulo delta of lambda has a Verma flag. This implies the statement of the theorem. But the most important corollary of the theorem is the statement that all projective modules in O have Verma flags. Note that each projective is a, is a direct sum of indecomposable projectives, and in decomposable projective objects, in decomposable projectives are exactly the projective covers of simple modules, and so they are direct summons of the modules P lambda mu n, which were constructed in the proof of the previous theorem. And the module P lambda mu n was a direct summon of the module Q lambda mu n. And we saw here in this example that the module Q lambda mu n has Verma flag. Consequently, all projective objects in O have Verma flags. Now let's discuss the simple preserving duality on O. So on the Lie algebra G, we have the classical Chevalier involution. An example for the Lie algebra SLN, this is just the transposition. So it's an anti-isomorphism of G, which has the property that it is the identity when restricted to the Cartan subalgebra. Now, if we have a module M in O, it's a weight module, so we can write it as a direct sum of weight spaces, and we know that all weight spaces are finite dimensional. So let's consider the module M star defined as a direct sum of duals to the weight spaces of M. So this is what is usually called the restricted dual. Since all M lambda are finite dimensional, so M lambda duals are also finite dimensional, uh, and the most important thing, so if we take the restricted dual twice, we come back to the module M. This will not be true if you just take the dual of M. If M is an infinite dimensional module, then the double dual will not be uh, the original module. But since we don't take the total dual, we take just the direct sum of duals of finite dimensional spaces, taking the, it twice will give us our module back. Naturally, the module M star is a right module over our algebra because it's a dual module. So the, if we dualize the left module, it becomes a right module over your algebra. But we have just fixed an anti-involution for our algebra G. So we can use this anti-involution to define on M star the structure of a left module. So now the action of G on M star will be twisted using the anti-involution sigma. So then, because of the condition that sigma preserves the Cartan subalgebra, M and M star will have the same supports and the same dimensions of the corresponding weight spaces, so the same characters. So therefore, the module M star is an object in O. And the assignment starting from M and assigning to it the module M star defines a contravariant functor, which is usually called the simple preserving duality. So directly from the definition, it is clear that it is involutive. So if we take it twice, we come back to the original module M. So in particular, it is anti-equivalence. Hence, it preserves the support. So the star of any simple object is isomorphic to the same simple object. Category O has a natural anti-involution that is an involutive contravariant equivalence which preserves the isomorphism classes of simple objects. 
So using this equivalence, we now can define the structural modules in O. So fix a weight lambda. So with this weight, we have the associated simple highest weight module, L lambda, and the associated universal highest weight module, delta lambda, the Verma module. The module L lambda is a quotient of delta lambda. And we just established that any module has a projective cover, so we have the indecomposable projective cover P lambda of L lambda. Note that delta lambda is generated by the lambda weight space, so P lambda subjects onto delta lambda. Delta lambda is a quotient of P lambda. And delta lambda subjects onto L lambda. And the simple highest weight modules are invariant with respect to our duality star. If we take the dual of projective modules, so because of the duality, we get injective modules. So I of lambda, the dual of the projective, will be the indecomposable injective envelope of L lambda. And then we have the corresponding dual verma modules, nabla lambda. So these are the duals under our duality star of the Verma modules delta lambda. And we have that L of lambda dually is a submodule of nabla lambda, and nabla lambda is a submodule of I of lambda. And the dual Verma modules are also called costandard modules. And we denote by L F of nabla the full subcategory in O, which consists of all modules which have a dual Verma flag, or also known as a costandard filtration. That is a filtration whose subquotients are dual Verma modules. And since all projective modules have a Verma filtration, all injective modules, being dual to projectives, have dual Verma flag. So now let us try to play standard and costandard modules in O against each other. So as we have already noticed, any Verma module is free of rank 1 as a module over the universe enveloping algebra U of n minus. So it follows that any module with Verma flag is free of finite rank as a module over U of n minus. So in particular, it's a projective module as a U n minus module. So using our duality, any module with nabla filtration being dual to a projective module should be an injective module in the suitable category of modules over U of sigma of n minus. Note that our duality star twists the action by sigma. And sigma of n minus is in exactly n plus. So this means that any module with nabla filtration is injective in a suitable category of U n plus modules. It follows easily from the definitions that the module nabla lambda is the injective envelope of the simple one-dimensional n plus module c lambda in the category of locally finite u n plus modules. After these observations, we claim that the families of Verma and dual Verma modules are homologically dual to each other. In other words, the x from a Verma module to a dual Verma module vanishes unless the degree of the X is zero, so it's a home, and the highest weight of the Verma module and the dual Verma module are the same. In the last case, so when we take home from delta lambda to nabla lambda, this is one dimension. Taking into account the observations above, the proof is just an application of the classical adjunction. So by adjunction, so we define deltas as induced modules. So by adjunction, we can move this induction over uh, to the right-hand side as a restriction and get that the x of degree i from delta lambda to double mu in category O is the same as x of degree i from the simple module C lambda to the module nabla of mu, but now considered in the category of U H plus and plus modules. And as noticed above, nabla mu is the injective envelope of C mu, so therefore this x vanishes unless lambda is equal to mu, 
and E is equal to 1. Great. So this observation has many consequences. Consequence number one is that for any module with Verma flag, home from this module is an exact functor on the category F nabla. This is, of course, clear because we have just proved that any extension from any module with delta filtration to any module with nabla filtration vanishes. So we can just take the long exact sequence and all x terms in this sequence collapse to zero. Therefore, the obtained short exact sequence of Holmes will be exact. And dually, of course, for any module with nabla filtration, homing into this module is an exact functor on f delta. So this is just a dual statement. It, you can obtain it using the duality, which is an exact functor, and contravariant. But in particular, these two observations have the following consequence. That for any weight lambda and for any module m, m in f nabla, the dimension of the space of homomorphism from delta lambda to n equals the multiplicity of nabla lambda as a subquotient of the dual Verma flag of n. Indeed, using the exactness of homing from delta lambda, if we apply this home to a dual Verma filtration of n, and we use that home from delta lambda to nabla lambda is one-dimensional and to any nabla mu is zero-dimensional, we get exactly the statement of this corollary. And similarly, the dual statement, if we have a weight lambda and a module m with delta filtration, then the multiplicity of delta lambda as a subquotient of any Verma flag of m is equal to the dimension of the home space from this module to nabla of lambda. As a consequence, the multiplicity of a Verma module into any Verma flag of a module with Verma filtration is well defined and is independent of the choice of this filtration. Because we can express it as a dimension of the home space into some fixed module. So this dimension doesn't depend on the choice of the filtration. And similarly, the multiplicity of a dual Verma module in the dual Verma flag of any module with dual Verma filtration does not depend on the choice of this filtration. Again, because we can exp express this multiplicity as a dimension of some home space, which is clearly independent of the filtration. So now we are ready to formulate the main result of this lecture, which is the famous BGG reciprocity for category O. Again, this is a result from the original paper of BGG on category O. Assume that we have two weights, lambda and mu, in the dual space of the Cartan then the claim is that the multiplicity of delta mu as a subquotient of any Verma filtration of p lambda is equal to the composition multiplicity of L lambda as a simple subquotient of the module delta mu. The proof is as follows. First of all, from the previous slide, we know that the multiplicity of delta mu as a subquotient of a standard filtration of p lambda is equal to the dimension of the home space from p lambda to nabla mu. This is just one of the corollaries on the previous slide. Now, the next observation. So now consider this nabla mu as just some module. And of course, homing an indecomposable projective to any module gives us the composition multiplicity of the simple top of this projective in that particular module. So the dimension of this home space is equal to the com composition multiplicity of L lambda inside the dual Verma module nabla mu. However, we have a simple preserving duality which assures that the composition multiplicity of L lambda inside nabla mu is the same as the composition multiplicity of L lambda inside delta mu. So this proves the BGG reciprocity for category O. One of the corollaries of this BGG reciprocity 
is the fact that the Cartan matrix of O is symmetric and can be factored as a product of a matrix D and its transposed, where the matrix D is just the matrix of composition multiplicities of simple modules in Verma modules. This is a direct consequence of the BGG reciprocity, since the composition multiplicity of a simple module in a projective module, so this is exactly the entry of the Cartan matrix, can be computed by considering a Verma flag of our projective, and hence we can obtain this composition multiplicity by summing over all weights nu, which index simple objects in the block containing p lambda, and then we consider the multiplicity of delta nu in the standard filtration of p lambda, and then we multiply this by the composition multiplicity of L nu in the standard filtration of delta nu. And now we can use the BGG reciprocity to rewrite p lambda over delta nu as delta nu over L lambda. And this sum is exactly the product of the matrix of multiplicities of L's in deltas times its transpose. So here is an SL2 example. So if we take G to be equal to SL2, in this case, the non-simple Verma modules are exactly delta of n's, where n is a non-negative integer. So the structure of these Verma modules are delta of n contains a simple Verma submodule delta minus n minus 2, and uh, the corresponding quotient is again a simple module. So our multiplicities of simples in Verma modules are is a zero or one and the simple L nu has multiplicity one in delta lambda if and only if lambda is equal to mu or lambda is equal to minus mu minus two where lambda is a non-negative integer. So using the previous slide we thus get that the dimension of the home space from uh, the, the projective module P lambda to the injective module I mu, so this is exactly the entry of the Cartan matrix, is equal to 2, 1, or 0, and 2 happens if lambda is equal to mu and is an integer which is less than or equal to minus 2. This dimension is equal to 1 if lambda is equal to mu and is not the integer as described in the first case, or if lambda is minus mu minus 2 and is an integer. And it is 0 in all other cases. So in particular, for all lambda which are not integers less than or equal to minus 2, we have that the corresponding Verma module is actually projective in category O. And for all lambda which are such integers, integers which are less than or equal to minus 2, the projective module P lambda, it surjects onto delta lambda, of course, and the kernel of this surjection is exactly the Verma module delta minus lambda minus 2. So this explicitly describes the Cartan matrix for category O for the algebra SL2. Some questions for PhD students. Question number one. Prove that the dimension of the first extension between simple modules and lambda and L mu in O is equal to the dimension of the first extensions between these modules, but taken in the opposite order. Question number two. Prove that the dimension of the first x from a simple module to itself in category O is zero for all simple modules. Question number three. Proof that for a weight lambda in H star, the corresponding Verma module delta of lambda is projective if and only if delta of lambda is not a proper submodule of any other Verma module. Question four. For SL2, compute all extensions of all degrees from the dual Verma module Nabla 0 to the Verma module Delta 0. Question number 5. Compute the Cartan matrix 
for the principal block O0 of SL3. Thank you very much. See you next week.